It's Damon and Robert's Five Songs, a podcast starring Damon and Robert. Ten songs enter, ten songs leave. It's not that kind of podcast. And we are live for <clears throat> our podcast. No net. Robert. Yes, I am Damon, um, one of your podcast hosts. And who are you, sir? I'm Robert, the other podcast host. It's weird. It is, right? We are, yeah. we are podcasting here and um we we may not have by the time you hear this we will have definitely settled on one of the many uh awesome name options that robert has come up with for the podcast i will confess at this precise moment other than gushing about pretty much all of them we haven't settled on a particular one but it's going to be cool like whatever it's called yeah 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 right exactly we're not going to be pinned down right now so um so what are what are we doing here? It's a podcast about music. We're going to talk it's, about some music. We are men of a certain age, and it is we mandatory are. that we have the podcast. <laughs> exactly uh, right. So, and it's we're late because the the uh, pandemic really required this, and we're just catching up to that That's requirement. Right. Post pandemic, right? But but still, we want to we want to do our duty and add exactly. to the podcast. Yeah, catalog. I mean, it's it's overdue, frankly. <laughs> it is, frankly, that's right. So so we've uh, so a little uh, about us. Robert and I met. Um, we are, we are internet friends. I think we met online some like 25, 26 years ago on like trading miniatures for wargaming on a little site that I thought was long dead, but turns long. out it's still yeah. alive called Barter Town. So you can go out and find Barter Town. I think it's a, a Mad Max reference. Yes, it's a it is. <laughs> Thunderdome yes. reference right. to Barter Town. Who um, Barter Town? Yeah, but um, yeah. So that's just kind of interesting. I don't, I don't know anybody else who has like made an internet friend that they like kept. And you and I have talked mostly through email. We've seen each other a few times, you know, in mm -hmm. person at gaming conventions because that's kind of where we overlapped a lot. Was you're a big war gamer and I'm a big role playing gamer, and we both kind of dip toes in each other's pools at various times. And, and did those things. But um, yeah, D does that sound like a fair characterization of, of our relationship but over the years? Anything you would add? Yes. You did omit the fact that we were writing partners for a very long time. Oh, that's right. We did write things with and we even published. It's um, true. Yes, several yes. of them. Yeah, we have some published materials. Two, two is out several. Of two, two is yes. one. More than one is several. I would say <laughs> yes. We did um, the eldest son, which was a, a right. third edition D and D adventure. And I was trying to remember the other day, and I meant to look it up and forgot what year uh, that was. The Night been. Merchants. Yes, yeah, well, the Night Merchants, the second one we did. We yes. did like a little PDF release through Drive Through RPG. The Night Merchant. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. Too. They're both still pretty fun. Yeah. Um, you know, if you're into that kind of thing and role playing stuff and looking for some kooky stuff, go go check we them are, out. We are co owners see. of Let the Wook, uh, Let the Ogre Win Publishing. That's, right. <laughs> That's a Let the Ogre Win Publishing. Yes. Which is doing gangbusters. I think the IRS is going to be breathing down our neck for all those <laughs> profits we're raking in that we haven't, we haven't paid taxes on. And well, we may have made a dollar. <laughs> we I, may have, yeah, yeah, exactly. We might have made, I don't think we we reached uh, Not breaking any market. Uh, saturation no we did not we're not breaking any records that's right yeah. but yeah though what year would did third edition dd come out or when did we do the eldest oh, sum would that been the, um, was that the, the 2000s or the 90s i can't even remember it must have been like the i feel early like 2000s. it was either 2000 or 2001 somewhere okay. in that ballpark i yeah. remember being at gen con when it was released that's and there right. being long long lines for the player's handbook <laughs> that's right yeah that's right yeah God, wow we're old we are old. And so, yeah. it's, so just speaking of like, I will, I, I'm not afraid to say my age. I am 51, which I think makes me a little older than you, but true. we're kind of in the comparable range, right? As we record, I am a week and change away from turning 50. Okay. So, yeah. so, so yeah, so we we're, have, we're close. yeah. And because at this, of this, at this era, yeah, exactly. We are entering the same era, which is the, the awesome fifties, fifties, <laughs> the new 30, I think mm, that's, that's what I'm No, <laughs> except for all these things that hurt right. that didn't Aches, before pains. and that uh, like, what is that? That didn't yeah. be there. Um, Degradation. Exactly. But, but it also means that we have a lot of overlap, I think in terms of like musical culture, we were, we were experiencing music in a lot of the same ways at the same time. And I think we've, uh, as we have, 
places where we overlap, but we have places where our tastes are, are varied and quite different. And I think yes. that's one of the things why you suggested this podcast. This is Robert's idea um, to do this. And I think it's cool because we, we do, as you will see shortly from our initial list, have um, a little overlap and quite a bit of variance as well. Yeah. So the concept is that I said, these are five songs I can't live without. I don't know that that was the original concept, but right, it sounded but good. It is um, it's very good. Yeah. So I sent you five songs. You sent me five songs and we listened to them and digested them and thought, why is this person sending me this? Um, or at least maybe you felt <laughs> right. that way. I, I certainly no, didn't feel that way. No, that's good. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we have notes. We have we discussion we've, points. We've listened to these songs and we have notes. Yes. So yeah. uh, we're going to talk about them. That's, uh, That's right. that is the purpose of this podcast. And I think we're going to try and do this monthly. Maybe. Maybe. This may be a one great. and done. We'll see. <laughs> that that we'll see. But it seems to be going good so far. We'll see how yes. the actual the podcast oh, we're, content We're all goes. of 10 minutes. But yeah, the together. intro. I think the intro, we're really knocking it out of the park. <laughs> <laughs> I think this intro. It's really, the lack of really, name really. and the weird exactly. uh, long history. Yeah. <laughs> Precisely. Very strong. Right. Ooh, I wanted to add one note, actually. This is ah. just fun. Um, Romaine, my wife, we've been married for, for many years and we've been together since before you and I met, but I told her that I'm doing this podcast with Robert and she's like, who? And I'm like, the war master. And she's like, oh, okay. And that's a, she knows you mostly by the name, the war master, because that was your email handle. And wow. what I kind of like casually called you for literally like 20 years. Um, and at some point, I don't know when I just started calling you Robert and not a given war name. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Your actual name in the world but i just thought that was kind of funny i'm like she's like oh the war master i know who you're talking about <laughs> so so you will forever in my wife's mind be the war master sorry that could be worse. congratulations it, it, i was gonna say yeah, yeah as far as like nicknames go it's kind of badass yeah it's pretty <laughs> pretty good you could do a lot more evocative if nothing else <laughs> exactly well, right. so we have these lists of songs. We will put a, a link to like a playlist wherever you're listening to this. Look in the notes and there will be a link to YouTube or Apple or Spotify, maybe all three. But someplace where you can go listen to these tunes because we, we won't play them here because we don't want to get sued. And we love right. these artists and don't want to pick a fight with them. But um, we will lose I, that fight. We yes. will lose that fight. That's right. Um, I ran some numbers on our oh. little list. Would you would you care to, to hear some interesting factoids about the numbers? Uh, I would like to, I'm going to posit that one is the length of your total songs was like 17 minutes and mine was probably like a half an hour. That is exactly that right. Robert's five songs total 30 minutes in length and wow. Damon's five songs total 17 minutes in length. And we'll talk about that. I think some of that's kind of interesting about yeah. the, the the differences between these songs and kind of how things have, have changed over the last 30 or 40 years. The shortest song on your list is three minutes and 43 seconds long. The longest song is seven minutes and 18 seconds long. Shortest song on my list, two minutes 18 seconds longest four minutes and seven seconds so there's some variation some longer ones on your list the earliest year on your list you want to take a guess just like a wild guess what was the earliest release date of something on your list Boy. what goes off the top of your head i i don't think i had anything older than the 90s yep 98 was the earliest 98. year okay. I found for you. And the latest year is pretty much more recent than mine. Yeah. 2021 was right. the most recent. And again, it kind of ballparked from what I found. Um, the number of bands on Robert's list that I knew existed before we did this, zero. <laughs> I never wow. heard of any of these bands, which is a, another fun thing to talk about. But I'm, I'm happy to know them now, and, and we will discuss them. Um, the earliest year on my list, 1958. Thanks, Elvis. And the yeah. latest year, this is a little embarrassing, and I think maybe a little telling of me. The latest year in mine, 1988. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. We were we were teenagers when the last thing on my list was made. So anyway, I just thought that was uh, was interesting. And so far, we we'll, we can keep a running tab of this as the show goes mm -hmm. on. But the number of drummers sacrificed during the making of this podcast zero to date we've zero drummers had i to feel be like sacrificed. we got to get those numbers up those are amateur numbers <laughs> I, I hear you i hear you robert we will we'll, we'll work on that drummers watch out <laughs> line up please <laughs> line up please right justify your existence drummer. that's right all right so uh all right. So how uh, how how would you like to start i think we thought we'd well, pick you know one what i think we'll start list. at the beginning let's start at number one if you place. will 
Yeah. Indeed. I love that. Mm. All right. So all of the songs that you sent me, I was not previously familiar with. I knew the artists. Good. I knew every artist. Good. Okay. But not any of the songs, but which is good. Never... Okay. That is good. Yeah. Very good. Um, so number one was Johnny Came Lately by Steve Earle. Yes. Uh, my only real exposure to Steve Earle had been Copperhead Road, which I like a yep. lot. Yep. It's a really good. Kind of a big um, hit for him. Yep. Uh, a very good ballad in the traditional sense of it tells a complete story um gotcha and yep. it's, a, it's a warning it is uh, agreed I'm, I'm not really big on, on country and even like alt country sure <laughs> but it's kind of mostly because of what pop country is kind of this yeah. um you know completely souring uh thing yes uh, agreed so there's a lot of layers to this song uh, it's got piano it's got fiddle it's got guitar it's got bass it's got Either organ or banjo or both. I don't really yeah, know. Something. I didn't watch a video or anything. That's cool. Um, <laughs> it's kind of dancey, which did not really. I didn't expect that from Steve Earle. You know, I didn't think he was yeah. kind of a troubadour. Um, but it's kind of it's got a hard swerve in the lyrics. It, it uh, does. Mm. He, you know, we as a country have such a strong jingoism about you know World War II. And this song does not go that way at all. It starts that way. <laughs> That's right. It, it kind of lures you in hard. with that. Yes. Yes. Right? Yeah. Um, so really good. And um, tell me tell me why you liked it. Tell me why it's yeah. the first song you sent me. You and I have talked about this before, but about how in the 1980s, the way that you bought music was you went to the record store and you might have known like a song you heard on the radio, but mostly you were flipping through looking at covers of albums. Yes. And you yep. largely bought things based on the cover and kind of, you know, word of mouth. This of looks what your cool. Friends told you. Yeah. And yeah. Copperhead Road, I bought this Steve Earle album. It's on the same album as Copperhead Road. Um, I bought it because the cover looked really cool like it's got like a skull on it and it's like an army pack like rattlesnakes like on it i think yeah, yeah. yeah. it's yeah. pretty tough looking and i really <laughs> didn't know anything about it and i brought it home and i listened to it and it was really different and i liked it and all my friends were like dude that's country music you can't mm. listen to that and i have <laughs> many of the same sort of negative associations with like mainstream country music that you do i think it, yeah a lot of cases it's like slickly produced bad rock music with like different instruments but but this one is like guitar and some twang yeah, <laughs> exactly with like a pedal steel and yeah with yeah. certain instruments you only hear a fiddle um but this one really grabbed me and he's a great songwriter and there's something about this song and i guess another thing that maybe you and I will remember that perhaps our younger listeners might not is that culturally, like in the eighties, Vietnam and the footprint of that war was huge. Was yeah. like, it was a cosmic sort of shift for this country. And we were still really working it out in the eighties. And there was a, a lot of movies, a lot of popular media, you know, first blood, the Rambo movies, all kind of like hearkened from that Vietnam. Full experience. metal jacket. Yes. Full metal jacket. Yeah. Yeah. And um, and this song does exactly what you described, kind of like leans into the jingoism of World War II. Like that was a great war. We fought fascism and we, you know, grandpa brought grandma home because he met her in London and they were, you know, and just like this real sort of heroic picture of war and does kind of like pull the, the carpet out from under you at the end with this line that you find the songs being told from the point of view of a guy whose grandfather fought World War II and told him all these great stories. But this guy's coming back from Vietnam. Vietnam, and there's nobody here. Like nobody's excited that this guy is coming home. Nobody's celebrating what he went and did. And I just thought that was like a really cool storytelling technique. Cause like yeah. I'm by the, by the time I get to that last line, I'm totally into this song. Like I'm jingoing along with everybody else <laughs> here about how cool world war two was. And you know, that we did this great thing fighting fascism. Punch the Nazis. Right. You think you, you think you wouldn't have to fight it again, but oh well. Um, anyway, but yeah, I just really like that. And it kind of opened up, um, this whole type of music to me. I think before that I was like, country music is bad and I don't want to listen to any of it. And my friends were like that too. You know, they were all sort of metal heads and country, like even anything that sort of like sounded like country was bad. And I think this was the album that kind of turned my head around and particularly this tune about, you know, Hey, this music can, it, it can be really good. Like there's things I find that are attractive about it. And I like his voice and he's kind of like a no nonsense, like a no bullshit kind of yeah. guy. And you can sort of tell by his tone and the way he delivers it. And, and I enjoy that. So it was really kind of a gateway for me into a lot of music, which I will subject you to further on additional playlists. 
Christ. <laughs> so, you know, it's funny. My uncle was a disc jockey, not a, not a radio guy, but a, a yeah. party guy. You know, did a lot of yeah, parties. Yeah. And I helped him out a lot. Um, and one of the things that he told me was there was something that happened with country in like the 70s where it went from kind of like a little bit of the early outlaw roots and like yeah. something happened. I think it was disco that country went two directions. It went either like the underground outlaw country people, right. which is Steve Earle is definitely in that realm, that that genre. And then the pop side of things, which is what we don't like, what we really can't stand. Right. Um, and it was, it's this weird, and why disco did it, I don't know, but I guess it was just the way that, you know, they were signing labels. Uh, yeah. The labels were signing up artists. So, yeah, yeah it's, it is not something that I listen to normally, but certainly not something I objected to at all. So, nice. well done. Good job. Well, good. Awesome. So, let's, uh, let's flip over and, and do, uh, let me talk a little bit about the first one on Robert's list, which was, let's see if I get the name correct in all the parts key entity extraction three oh. Vic the butcher by uh coheed and cambria did i say cambria. all that you are correct, correct sir sweet good job well so, done so yeah so this is 2012 and man this is like a super impressive track for for one thing it's a it's it's heavy like uh, musically it, it strikes me as like really heavy and and in some cases maybe like a little crunchy and noisier than music i would gravitate to normally but man, it's super catchy. Like I was actually walking around in the kitchen before we started this, like singing the refrain. Hey, yo, DJ, hey, I'm up. Yeah, like it's got a great like catchy refrain. And I listened to it in the car today again, man. And it's just like a real it gets the blood pumping. Yeah, it, it is. It's a real toe tapper. And I mean, it's and and these bands. I think I'm, I'm going to touch on this again with some other picks you have on your list, but they're really technically proficient and you can, mm -hmm. sh you can see it. It's like, these are not like guys who are like playing metal music in their garage. Like these are dudes who are like really into the technical craft and it shows like throughout. I mean, I didn't count and I'm not like a time signature guy, but I'm like, I bet this has like different time signatures and it might even change keys. And I don't care <laughs> because it's really catchy. And another thing listening to this is, um, um, it's really story driven. And I think that's something you and I have in common. Like we're both really attracted to story songs or songs that, that tell a story. And after I listened to it a couple times, I allowed myself to go do a little research and learn that the guy who ah. writes these and is the lead singer does like, has a whole like, writes novels too. And this like, like tells the science fiction story. So that was cool. Like this idea that it's part of this whole like multiverse sort of, of, of media that, that you can dig into. Um, there's definitely we'll a lot of appeal for that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I totally find that appealing too. And, um, you know, the other thing listening to a lot of these that occurred to me, which I just happened to know from you and I talking about music earlier is I'm reminded by how much you liked faith no more as a mm. band and how yep. influential that vocalist turned out to be like, you know, going back, you wouldn't necessarily think like this guy is going to have like a seminal impact on a lot of bands, but he really did. And you can hear it here, like in the lead vocalist, the way he phrases things, the kind of way he spits part of the lyrics out like very aggressively. And it, it just really got like somebody who's really worked on that kind of vocal style and has a lot of dynamics in it too, which I like. So man, I, I just really liked this one. And that guy's got a bonkers voice, by the way. Like yes. Lead he hits singer a lot of range. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He does super expressive and like not afraid to, to go soft or like crazy loud. So yeah, man, I really liked it. It's, I think, um, yeah, it's, I, I'm curious to know more about like, if you're into the whole story or if you kind of listen to them as a story. I mean, and I've got some on my list, like King Diamond stuff in particular, yep. like really story driven. So, so yeah, I am, I enjoyed the heck out of this, but again, I just never heard of these guys. So Coheed and Cambria is kind of, they have their whole um, catalog except for one album. And I think they've got eight albums now is a story is, is, it, it's it's got prologue and it's got late and it's got future. I mean, it is all over the place. Okay, and it's some. I mean, it's not. It's not Star Wars. It's not the most coherent, amazing thing, but it's still good. It's still really yeah. well done. And um, I actually met the singer at a comic book store. He did a really? signing of all places. Uh, super nice guy. I was actually looking across the room because I have. He put out a. Um, his name is Claudio, and he put out a uh, little action figure called Kill audio 
which is Claudio. Um, nice. And I, it's signed, and it, I don't know where the hell it is. It's in this room somewhere. <laughs> it's somewhere in that um, room. It's somewhere. This room is a mess. <laughs> anyway, um, they're fantastic. They they are. They put on a hell of a good show. I've seen them live several times. Yeah. And um, I just love. I love Coheed. They're one of my favorite bands. And yes, they not only is the the whole storyline of their things, but each one of their songs tends to be like a chapter of the story and tell okay. a pretty good start start medium and finish. Yeah, I mean, you can definitely tell there's a, like, and you know, one of the cool things about it, and we can talk about this will come up again, I think, <laughs> is that with with some of these story songs, like, it doesn't matter if I can't follow, like, every detail of the story, you feel there's a story there, and that gives it kind of a different energy for me, or, like, yeah. gives me a different way of engagement, like, even if I don't understand exactly like I would if I was reading a graphic novel or just, you know, a piece of fiction where I get everything kind of, you know, laid out for me. Hmm. Yeah, it's I, I'm I'm really glad you liked it because it's definitely I would probably have four or five more of them as we go forward. There's actually even kind of a sequel to this song. Yeah, you know, this guy talks about burning down something. Yes, there's somebody who's stopping him in a later song. Oh, okay, so it's 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 <laughs> nice. called Century uh, the Defiant. Uh, look that up. <laughs> but see, well, and and we can always go on next month's list That's if true. we don't get canceled. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> but they make yeah. Use. Yeah. the influencers are going to shut us down uh, that's right uh well yeah so so far so good we are two two uh two that we both enjoyed from the other indeed. so indeed and you know what i think there's gonna be more of that i, feel I do like, too yeah i mean for the nice. record there's nothing on your list that i found i'm like why did robert give me this you know yeah there's a there's a lot of ways yeah. into these i think i came in early you know next time we're gonna go yeah good me we'll, too we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll push it from here for sure <laughs> but we but yeah we softballed it for each other this first yeah time. <laughs> all right so ready for my number two i am sir all right. Well, technically, you're number two. My response to you now. Nah, yes. Yeah, um, mm-hmm. So this was King Diamond. The song is yeah. dressed in white. Uh, and, you know, nobody sings like King Diamond. He has the most distinctive kind of wailing voice. <laughs> and I it's not it's not my favorite. I got to say. Understood. That's that's he's fair. a little <laughs> shrill for me. It's um, really divisive. It is a divisive it is. voice. Mm. But, you know, it's funny because metal has so many different types of voicing. You know, you have. You know, the more pop style, you've got the real deep guttural, you know, some what they charitably call cookie monster uh, vocals. Right, 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 or, right, right yeah. They, or they call them harsh or dirty or, you know, whatever. But and I and I actually like those more than I like kind of the shrill, um, the, the high pitched sort of thing. I don't know what that yeah. is. I'm not sure what it says about me that I, yeah. that I feel that way. But anyway, um, I, this is still a good song. I, I certainly don't like it. Um, you know what I like the most, I think, is when. They alternate between the the more normal is a bad way of saying it, but yeah. I'll go for that for now. The typical registers versus right. the high pitch. So that yeah. does so that he does do that in this song. Yeah. Uh, musically, it's very much up my alley. Um, it sounds eighties. I mean, there's no oh, way totally. not to can't get away can't get away from that. <laughs> Me, metal in the eighties had a tone, and I think it was something to do with they hadn't figured out you know the right way to record it. Um, right. You know, they didn't. Get, the right lows and highs and again i'm not a production guy either but i yeah. i can i kind of know the difference between 80s and 90s music production for metal especially because you can definitely hear there's much more low end and high end on most albums yeah and in the 80s it's very much mid-range all the way <laughs> that, that's right very, very um, middle of the road so yeah. you don't know what else to do with it at that <laughs> that's right yes yeah, it, it worked for the pop singer exactly. it worked for right. michael jackson Precisely. yeah uh so this has got dueling guitar solos which is always nice i mean that and that too is is very much of the 80s i don't think people do that so much anymore <laughs> you know i know slayer it, uh, i remember mm-hmm. reading liner notes for slayer and they literally have it listed solo kenneman solo uh <laughs> that's right name. yeah um, the, yeah, the, yeah. Like three or four solos per song yeah so i i cheated i looked up the lyrics on genius.com yeah. because totally, you know i'm totally fair uh, as he's not always the easiest to understand sometimes no. it's a little bit uh <laughs> challenging um but, you know, so we were talking in email prior to this about the yeah. King in Yellow. And yes. I think that that actually has some sort of parallels to this. Um, he himself is not like the king of horror metal that came later. But he's definitely, again, like the precursor, the seminal influence of it or, or one of them. Because certainly yeah. we have one coming up later who is even I mean, more seminal. Even more seminal. But, yeah. Yes. <laughs> it's so funny to say that. But, like, Metallica definitely, you know, was huge King Diamond fans. Um Ghost, the band Ghost now, oh, yeah. huge. I mean, they owe him royalty yeah. checks and a half. <laughs> um, 
But sometimes it's funny. I don't always find the seminal work to be to my taste. Sure. I'm more into the what came after. Right. But I get, you know, the, the, the homage, the what they owe yeah. to the seminal Look work. back to where it came from. You're like, oh, the yes. people that I'm into might be into like a bit we're into this guy. I'm into them. Yes. But I can right. see like how that led to this thing I really like. Right. But, you know, with, this is so this is another crazy reference. We were talking about this on whatever uh, social network we talk on. I don't remember what it was. <laughs> the thread or I don't know, Facebook. Yeah, somebody. yeah, don't sure. Know. Maybe, One of those. Sure. Somewhere. But it was... There are Who songs, and the Who yeah. I actually really like as as themselves as an artist, and as the people who've covered the Who. Yeah, and you know, they, I don't feel like people do bad Who covers. It's just something about that is such a good, strong source material yeah. that it doesn't rob from the original to to do it again. Um, Agreed. Yeah, totally. Anyway, the King yeah. Diamond. King Diamond dressed in white yeah so i love king diamond <laughs> Un unapologetically because he was sort of one of my gateways into like different kinds of metal in the 80s right he was kind mm -hmm. of he was a little off kilter he was the danish guy who was kind of like yes. before there was a lot of black metal or you know like uh, real satanic metal and stuff like that he was kind of the guy who's like oh i'm going to tell these like horror stories and i'm going to get people you know into it that way and yeah he's one of the only like non alice cooper face paint that I can abide and we'll talk about <laughs> Alice later and kind of why that is. But, Proto um, corpse paint. Yeah. Yeah. Like, but it's yeah. super melodic metal. And I think like I've always been like really attracted to stuff that's got like a strong melody. And this mm -hmm. one, like, man, there's something about the beat of it and the way this tune comes off. Like when I hear it, I just kind of want to bop a little. Like it's got like a real movement to it. And I think it's that melody with the guitars. They have like, you know, those sort of synchronized guitar solos yeah. that they yeah, yeah. And um, and his voice, which again, totally like understand why someone would be like, I don't know, man, that voice is pretty out there. Like going from the falsetto down to the growl, he's great at it. But it it's is. also it goes, like, and just line by line, taste. it could be surprise. <sighs> Yeah, yeah, right. Back and forth. And again, kind of these horror stories, right? Or like stories in this case, you know, like a, a horror story in this case. But the idea that he did, um, he had a band before Merciful Fate that was kind of more of like a straight ahead metal band. And his, he'd always said, you know, he formed his own band, King Diamond, to like do these more story concept albums that, you know, didn't necessarily fit with what he was doing with his other. Abigail, band. right? Yeah, Abigail was yeah. kind of the breakthrough one. Right, right. This one, Fatal Portrait, this is off of the album Fatal Portrait, which is kind of, I guess, a, a reference to the picture of Dorian Gray, uh -huh. as that's kind of like steals from the story. Um, but, you know, again, kind of to what we talked about with um, Coheed and Cambria, like, I I love these albums, but if you like sat me down and grilled me about the details of these stories, <laughs> I'd be like, I don't know, dude. There's some there's some lady and she's wearing white, and I think she's a ghost and she's kind of evil, and you know, <laughs> so it's really broad and kind of vague in my mind. Even after like listening to these albums for decades, um, but there's a couple of them later on, and I King Diamond's going to show up on <laughs> some list again that I think hold a little hold together a little better story wise. But this one, just as like a standalone tune, felt like just a real kind of um, example of sort of the melodic kind of yeah. heavy metal that I really like from that era and that kind of sucked me into a lot of other music, including some that we're going to find on on this list. And yeah, Abigail was like huge and like his breakthrough album. And um, I don't like it as much as <laughs> this. I mean, it's good. It's definitely, you can see why it's a breakthrough and it's really yeah, yeah. story driven. Like the whole album tells like one complete story. Um, but yeah, for some reason, I, I kind of go back to this one because it's got a few standalone tunes on it and like four. This one's part of like a four or five section story. But again, I if pressed, I really couldn't tell you about the detail. You're allowed to enjoy it on its own merits. You don't have to go whole hog. There yeah. are websites devoted to Coheed and Cambria story and like yeah. unlocking the Easter eggs and stuff. And I'm just like, have fun. That's great. Yeah, I mean, yeah it's I like I enjoy love this the... and I don't have to be on that level. Right. I think that's yes. a that, that's a really good point to make because, I, you know, it's cool that people are like into that and want to be able to do that and can do that with that kind of material. And it's also cool that we can enjoy it without having to do that. It's like, yeah, that's awesome. I see what you're doing there. More power to you. But I don't need to. It's got layers. To it. Yes. Like that's an right. onion. You can you can enjoy it in many different ways. <laughs> yes. And that 
1986 for anybody keeping score. No. King Diamond, <laughs> man. Well, let's go. Let's uh, let's go to number two on on my list from Robert's playlist, which is Eons by Carnival. Yes, and, yeah. Um, um, I also had this is where I made the note. I'm like, man, your music is way more current than mine. <laughs> like this was from 2013, which is still like a decade old, but yeah, it's yeah. like really current compared. Fun fact, and, their most recent album is 2013, sadly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh no. So yeah. I really like this too. Like it's again, like it's it, there's like really heavy bass and drums talking about kind of like the way production on metal music moved, or you know, I, I hear it referred to as progressive metal, which we can talk about what the hell you think that is i've got my thoughts or new metal and that's, that's you know. really where i live is yeah yeah, my yeah. Jam. yeah so um but like really heavy bass and drums and kind of but like a real busy and uh, busy is not the right word but like a real prominent lead that mm-hmm. also kind of takes you through so again that melody is there but there's this real like like chunky chug under these that that really kind of drives it and and yeah the for those who aren't on video with us Damon is much more mobile than I am. I'm sitting very still. Damon is just bopping around. It's it's fun. That's right. That's right. If there's a video version of this and you want to see me bop around, uh, then great. If not, and that uh, you find that alarming and disturbing, I apologize and just listen to the audio. Just turn the um, turn the video off. Go back to the audio. Turn the video off exactly. Just listen to the audio. It'll be uh, at least half as fascinating. I guarantee. Um, so the voice on this one is different though than the Coheed and Cambria guy. Like he's got. Like kind of a gentle, and again, it's really melodic, but it's it strikes me as a very different kind of vocal approach on this. And I liked it, but it's it's very different. It's like the music is really heavy, but the vocal's kind of gentle in some places, or kind of, you know, like, yeah, it, it just felt much more... Um, kind of uh, less uh, aggressive than the Coheed and Cambria vocal, which I liked a lot and has like a lot of dynamics like we talked about. But this one felt like a little more inviting in some ways, like that kind of gentler vocal to me. Lyrically, I'll say, I, I wondered, I think it's probably the same kind of thing. I'm like, there's probably a story here, but lyrically it's a little denser for me than the Coheed and Cambria, even though I didn't understand necessarily the story on that one. I could like pick out story elements and kind of say, oh, something's happening with a character here. Or he's talking to another character here. And in this one, maybe it's, maybe it's because I was kind of seduced by that vocal so much, like by the quality of his voice and more just kind of enjoying that than picking out the content of it but um yeah i really like this one too and um and and sort of on a on a different level like musically again it seems like really tight to me and like these guys are really know how to play and seem to enjoy like you know pushing that like playing music that's you know technically proficient that i could not just pick up a guitar and play like no way i can strum some chords and do some stuff but i could not do like any of this um so yeah i liked it and uh, it but it was kind of a different experience than the coheed and cambria but hearkened back to that so so yeah i I'd, I'd love for you to talk a little bit about like who does the about the story here i didn't do the research on these guys that i did on coheed and cambria so i don't know if this is if my sense that this is part of a larger story is true or if i just kind of made that up so yes sort of um and i okay. don't actually know this this one is a little bit unclear to me the the lyrics are okay very much either it's like a post-apocalypse or it's like an alien world because at the end they, they sort of talk about um, that something is running out and either it's their air or their life or something yeah. and that the poison in their veins is burning. And so there's, yeah. there's a lot of illusion in this one that I'm not completely clear on myself. Um, so I find it interesting. I like to know about artists and, and this does yeah. bring up the whole, I can't divorce art from artists. You know, if the artist does something awful, if they, you know, insult my mama, I'm, Mm -hmm. you know what, I'm not going to listen to your record anymore. You're going to take take umbrage at that. Yes. Yeah, that's Mm -hmm. right. I I feel, I feel that takes, um, that destroys your art for me. Um, These guys haven't done anything like that. (laughs) A bad way to go into this. Uh, Quick note. We have not said anything bad about Robert's mother to the best of our Not to my knowledge. Yes. That's why they're an Australian Mm -hmm. band. And the singer okay. is Irish. He came over from Ireland oh, wow. at some point in his life. I don't know when. Um, right. Created this band with some Aussies. 
So I've never seen them live. More is a pity. I'd really like to at some point. Yeah. Um, the singer is in two bands. He's in this very much straight ahead metal alternative and progressive yeah. metal band. And he's also in kind of this alt alternative, which doesn't mean a whole lot, but it's a very poppy band called okay. um, Birds to Tokyo. And so he, it's very funny that you said he's got much lighter uh, voice and more yeah. soft or whatever. He's He's got a good range as well. He does occasionally, but not terribly often, sing in harsher tones. There's a couple of songs yeah. in Carnival's that he does go not quite guttural, but more kind of shouting and angry. Yeah. Um, but they're the rarity. The, the, okay. He's much typically a a melodic singer, and he's yeah. he's a certainly a talented singer. He's he can uh, definitely he's got pipes. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is this was a discovery I made. I'm not even sure exactly how. Um, their second album is their most lauded which is called Sound Awake. This is off their third and most recent okay. album to date. Um, and this is like nine minutes, 10 minutes long song. And this is quite a journey. Yeah. 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 Um, this, is the, this is the long one on your list. Yes. It clocks in at 718. Yeah. Oh, only seven. I thought it was long. It, yeah. it's, it feels yeah. like a really long song and it's got a lot of different parts. I mean, it, it definitely goes through ups and downs and lefts and rights. Um, and I love it. I think it's a fantastic yeah. song. I, again, I wouldn't send you anything I didn't like. Yeah. Um, I think, yeah. That, if I can just jump on that part where you talked about the parts, that's another thing yes. that's really interesting about a lot of the, the tunes on your list. I think it's true. Coed, Keaton Cambria. I think it's true here. They don't, I, I always think about songs in my like old hidebound way of like, it's intro first, chorus first, chorus. Right. Break, ABA. And, you know, yeah. yeah. Right. But these feel much more like movements to me. Like they're, they have sections or parts almost like an opera or like a piece of classical music mm. more than than like a you know what, what i think of as like a classic song structure and i think there's complexity cool. yes yeah and i think that like it lends itself to the storytelling too because mm -hmm. it, then you ha can have kind of transitions um within the story that are echoed musically too so yeah just just a cool thing that i thought of but apparently didn't write down <laughs> so <when> you <laughs> said it i'm like oh yeah that thing <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> um, this band also I've seen on YouTube uh, for anyone who wants to follow up. They have some pieces where like some of the sound engineers are analyzing it and they have like 60 tracks in their oh, pro wow. tools or whatever yeah. else. So they just layer upon layer upon layer upon layer upon. Yeah, it's just, oh, yeah. which is, you know, for those purists among you, sure, it's hard to make that sound live. Um, yeah. But it's fascinating on record and especially with headphones. It's oh, amazing. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I don't care at all. Like, I, I, there are people I'm sure who are like, "Well, you couldn't play that live, so it doesn't yeah. count." And I'm like, "That's bullshit." Like, right. Anything you can make, like, dude, I'm gonna, I'll be happy to listen to it. And if that's the only way you can make it, more's the better. Like, you know, make it Indeed. as it's complex still good. and subtle as you can. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, that's just, yeah, that's cool that you have. Like, it's so complex and subtle, you have to make it this way. You know, you couldn't, couldn't make it with sixty people on a stage. So. Yeah, very cool. Any any thoughts, any sense of why they haven't made an album in a long time? Are they done? Do they still tour, as far as you know? Or So they do tour. They're touring Australia right now. They're not coming to the U.S. on this cycle. I don't know gotcha. if it's because the other band um, yeah. eats up the singer's time more, if it's that the other four members of the band, four or five members, like Tool, you know, they're very slow at working things out. They don't rush anything. Yeah. They want to get their sound right. And again, when you're doing 60 tracks per song, it it's not a, a quick process. <laughs> no. Yeah. Cool. All right. So. Very good. Carnival. Eons. Carnival. <laughs> nice. Great. All right. Uh, number three on your list is yes. Rock and Roll by Motorhead. Motorhead. <laughs> what? I don't really know what I can say about Motorhead. <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> what, what you're allowed? You mean what you're allowed legally to say because right. of the the non disclosure agreement you signed, or, <laughs> or <laughs> because of the settlement and the terms of the settlement? I don't know. Just they they're kind of a force of nature in in rock and or hard rock metal. I don't know what you yeah. want, whatever you want to call them. It doesn't matter. Them. It's Motorhead. You know they yeah. are kind of a a subgenre unto themselves. Yeah. Um, and, and I'm on record as saying before that I'm not really impressed with any songs that are about rock and roll, the power <laughs> of rock and roll, right. rocking yeah. out. Right. You're generally the like power rocking of music extra hard. in general. Right. Yeah. Mm. But I will make allowances for songs that are about touring uh, because of the excellent turn the page that, yeah, that, that I'm okay page. with. Eager classic. Uh, yes. Exactly. Exactly. But 
Motorhead does not have to follow my rules as a, as a general. <laughs> they didn't follow anybody else's, to, no. to be fair. And I, I don't think I have a lot of influence in that regard. So the rules just don't apply. And it's not, this song is not just a pure straight ahead rock and roll is good song. I mean, this is not like rock and roll all night by Kiss. Right. Which is a good song, but nothing, lyrically, nothing against Kiss, you know, but yeah, maybe dumb. a tad just, simple. Yeah. Yes. That's true of most of their stuff. So this one is, you know, it's kind of about music to solace against being alone. And, yeah. and, and I'm going to say a word that's probably kind of big for, for Motorhead. Uh, perfidious nature of women. Yeah. Um, which, you know, is not totally fair. Both of us being married men of... of exactly. Many, uh, many years. Many, many, many years. Yeah. Um, but, you know, the general not wanting to be tied down uh, yeah. is, a, is a feature of this song. And that there's always a song he can love if not a woman. So, right. Yeah. You know, you know, it's good not to be particular. <laughs> so, yeah, well, you know, he had options. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Little ones, big ones. And I was like, wait, are we still talking mm-hmm. about the music? Yeah, sure. Sure we are. Yeah, okay. Sure we yeah. are. Sure we yeah. are, Robert. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. So of all of the Motorhead songs, and I, and I don't even know how many albums they had, because, you know, I don't, I didn't listen to a lot of Motorhead. Motorhead, to me, you could add Motorhead to any playlist, and it was good, and it didn't really matter. They're, they didn't have a huge variety in their song content. That's fair. Um, mm-hmm. They, they had kind of a very straight ahead. Here's the bass. Here's the drums. Here's guitar. Here's a very guttural singing. Yeah. Let's do it. Absolutely. <laughs> so why this one? Why'd you pick this so, one? So this was the first Motorhead album I ever bought. And the, I think the first Motorhead song I ever heard. And much like, you know, the, uh, the, the Steve Earle record, I bought it <laughs> largely based on the cover, which was totally badass and still is. It got that yep. big, like crazy Motorhead demon face on it yeah, or yeah. whatever. Um, and you know, it's, it's another one. My buddies in high school initially made fun of me for buying this album and then they heard it. And within like a month, they were all motorhead fans too. <laughs> they were all, like, we were all deeply in yes. to motorhead. Yeah. And I've always kind of loved, you know, singers who particularly male singers who have kind of non-traditional voices mm-hmm. and Lemmy's about as non-traditional a voice as you can get and and like a straight ahead singing style that you just you know and particularly then i had never heard anybody else sound like that and it's like to your point it's not a think piece <laughs> like there's not a lot of deep thinking here it's an but attitude. I mean, like, yes. yeah there's an attitude to it and definitely kind of like that touring musician sort of you know mythos is is tied up in here for sure but musically man i i like motorhead a lot and like you said i think a lot of motorhead music hits the same notes in terms of like it's really kicking and fast and it's always kind of reminded me more of like you know like this was my chuck berry <laughs> like uh. my dad would have had chuck <laughs> berry i'm like i had motorhead i'm like they're just loud and fast and really catchy and you know and the content you know and sometimes Lemmy was a pretty good writer when he wanted to be but he also right. wasn't afraid to like lean into a really simple concept and there are a lot of motorhead songs about being on the road about meeting girls on the road and you know rock and roll <laughs> and, and yeah to your point like I don't particularly love those songs about rock and roll either. You know, like there's only one way to rock. I'm like, please yes. give me a save break. my soul. <laughs> exactly. Like yeah. pretty tedious and self indulgent. But for some reason, when Motorhead does it, I'm like, eh. I just feel like he's just like telling me what his life is like, and like it's different than mine. So, so yeah, I I like them. Like I think this is still my favorite Motorhead album. And to your point, I think everybody should just like pick a Motorhead album and say that's your favorite Motorhead album and adopt it. Because yeah. <laughs> exactly, adopt it. You listen to it enough, it will become your favorite Motorhead album. Um, so yeah, I just uh, it's a band that is kind of they sit a little outside. Like I feel like of all the metal music I liked in high school, like Motorhead's kind of different. Like Motorhead yeah. was the band that the metalheads and the punks could agree on in high school. Like a fight about everything else, but like everybody kind of liked Motorhead. And they were like if the Ramones were more of a biker gang. The Ramones were always <laughs> exactly. they, they were kind of the nerds a little bit. That's right, a little bit, right? Yeah. yeah. And and yeah. Motorhead would never been accused of being a nerd at every any that's, point. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. In fact, I, I, went, I saw Motorhead in concert a couple times. One of the times, oh. my buddy and I went somewhere up in Chicago, and we stopped somewhere before the show, and there was a huge number of bikers there. And let me tell you, I've never, for folks who would normally like frighten little old like Damon, 
they were really nice guys. <laughs> they were so, you know, and we bonded over a love of motorhead. It's like, this is what I have in common with like, nice. these, like tough, you know, leather clad, like hard bitten biker guys. And I mean, you know, in, in an hour later, we were all like singing, you know, standing up and singing the song. So it was just kind of a, a nice memory as a kid. I'm like, oh, you know, you think you don't have much in common with a lot of people, right. but you right, scratch right. the surface a little bit. And I'm like, yeah, yeah you, you might be surprised. We all love Lemmy. That's right. Everybody loves Lemmy. Rest in peace, Lemmy, wherever, wherever you may be. <laughs> well, let's see. Number. Let me let me flip back over. Um, yes, I've got "Return to Earth" by the Contortionist next. Oh, now, Miles, me... I want to say before you start. Yes, would you have assumed that this song would, or, or the name "The Contortionist" would have been this this type of music? I would not I would have. assume that. Yeah, that would be a much more aggressive threatening sound <laughs> right i could see it going kind of either way i could see like the contortionist being like a really aggressive sounding band or i could see it being like a like a, a waif from iceland who calls <laughs> right. herself the contortionist. very emo very hard <laughs> exactly. to receive, right yeah. with like a triangle featuring prominently in the music so yeah i feel like it's so but th yeah this band um Oh man, it's a really another one. Like you, you, you like bands with really cool vocalists. Like this is another one. Like yes. the vocalist here is amazing. And again, the words are like really important here. And again, I may not fully understand like a million of them, but um, or like the the full spread of the story going on here. Um, but again, like super dynamic like really excellent at going from kind of these soft, gentle passages to these peppier and sometimes downright like aggressive, heavy passages. But, but it's really that the kind of ride of it that I like, you know, the fact that it's not one thing, you know, if, if you don't like what it's doing right at the moment, like, wait a minute, because it's going <laughs> to yeah. go somewhere else. And again, like, like the last two we talked about also super technically proficient, like clearly these guys are really musical and care about that. And you can tell, like, it's just really like, uh, they're going to play something that's not easy to play, but that's going to sound really cool. And, um, you know, I don't know if the song is about like some, is it like some, a technical, like sci-fi return to earth maybe, or like a metaphor for helping a loved one kick a drug habit too. Cause there's like this return to earth and, you know, it, it, it really hit me like emotionally, I think in a way the other two before this didn't like, I feel like there's a way where this guy, the way this is written is written in such a way that I'm like, this could be like some like out there sci-fi story, or it could be like a really like telling metaphor for somebody that you're trying to help that you see kind of like tearing themselves down or like not giving themselves a chance. Um, these guys are from Indianapolis. I did look that up because I was yes. just curious. And so I, I live about an hour South of, of Indianapolis. And it was curious to me. I was, I wanted to know more about them because I, this one really kind of sucked me in. Um, sounds like they started more as like a death core band, which really shocked me given where this is. And, um, but Different it sounds singer, like, yes. yeah, I was going to say, it sounds like they've changed front mans or vocalists like several times. And along with mm -hmm. that kind of shifted, um, to this, which is kind of a softer sound than maybe the, the previous two oh, yeah. as well. But I mean, I, so it feels like connected to, you know, Carnival and the Coheed and Cambria, but, but different too. Like, I'm like, oh, these are all like, these three bands are like all doing different things in like the same playground or the same sort of space. Um. So yeah, I I really like this one, and I think of of like all of the ones on your list. This one hit me like emotionally the most. Like I felt it more than maybe anything else on the list. So this song is about the whole album is really um, about a friend who is killing themselves with heroin. Hmm. Um, they've the, their previous album was about really this friend's mother dying. It's really kind oh, wow. of strange how they're singing about someone else's family, but it, you know, yeah. it, it makes it work. Right. And this song is the penultimate song in the album where he's kind of just given up. The singer tr is trying to relate to his friend, but he kind of realizes this person is going to kill themselves. Yeah. That their goal can't, is can't stop them. just medication to death. Yeah. Um, and the return to earth is sort of a giving up of the, the dream that this person is going to kick it. That, that right. I'm coming down to earth and realizing they're on the way out. They're, they're, the they want to die. Yeah. They're going to accomplish that goal. Right. Um, 
it's really it's really sad, but also it's it's kind of it's kind of a beautiful thing of just like acceptance, I guess. Yeah. Which sounds really strange in, in context, but you know, you can't save someone who doesn't want to be saved. That's that right. They, yeah. they have made yeah. their choice. Yeah. Um, yeah, they, this is a beautiful uh, um, group, the, the contortionist. Again, when I first saw the name and I heard the yeah. this guy was like, mm, does not compute. No, weird. Different. <laughs> Um, but I really enjoy them and I, I hope to see them live. So they still have, so their first two or three albums were with a different vocalist and they were very much tech debt okay. streaming. Yeah. No, no nonsense. Just, brr, and, um, not, I, again, I, I enjoy this guy can stream or dirty or harsh or whatever you want to call it. Um, but his, his talent is in singing. He sings beautifully. As yeah. Hear. Yeah. Um, so and I and I even can enjoy when he goes between both, which the the previous album to this one he does. Okay. Um, they too are long overdue for a follow up. I think this is from 2017, 2016, Correct. something 2017 like that. was the year I found from the album Clairvoyant. Indeed. So it's funny. I the only reason I think I care about album years is because I yeah. worked at the record store and it just became kind of second nature to, for me to know these things. I don't know why. It doesn't really matter, and especially in the era yeah. of you know today. Right. Um, but I am, they are long overdue for a, a new album. It was talked about during COVID that they were yeah. working on something. And here we are, hopefully post COVID. Hopefully. And, and don't have anything yet. So, <laughs> yes, indeed. Yeah. No, really good one, man. Yeah. Really. Yeah. And then that's good to hear that because I was uh, coming off the other two. I'm like, maybe this is like another story song that I'm not like, you know. And so I tried to initially fit it in that box. And I'm like, oh, no, mm -hmm. man, this feels like really more personal. And and much more kind of like an emotional uh, response to a real person than maybe yeah. the, the the other yep, yep. tunes do. And and yeah, and I, that that makes perfect sense. Like it, there is this sort of I don't know, I, resignation's maybe not the right word, but you're right. You, you you could tell that like the narrator has kind of reached this point where it's like you can't save a person. You realize really all you're doing is kind of making yourself crazy or right. you know hurting yourself, and you're not helping them because they don't want to be helped. And in this kind of, yeah, coming to peace with the fact that this terrible thing that I don't want to happen is going to happen and they're I'm powerless to stop it. So, yeah, just like a real powerful um, subject for a song and really artfully. It's, it's kind of dark. Yeah, but it's yeah, it, but really the whole yeah. album is amazing. And it really it's so I, I had trouble picking a song. I knew I wanted one of their songs, but which one was definitely yeah. the question. And I think this one is the most honest piece because it is. There's they do traffic and metaphor a lot, which is good. Yeah, it is great. I yeah. get music oddly, yeah. um, Ooh, but this one good. has both the metaphor and the hard truth. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no, really good, man. That's a that's a solid tune and sounds like a great Very band. <laughs> Speaking of metaphor, oh, look at that segue! That <laughs> yeah, look at that nice segue. Man, Two points. nice. <laughs> Public Animal Number Nine by Alice Cooper. I've never heard this before. And I know, I mean, I have to say, I am not, again, Alice Cooper. I enjoy Alice Cooper. Yeah. I would struggle to name 10 of his songs. That's perfectly his, their, understandable. We're going to use it interchangeably because it's both a band and a person. That's right. Mm -hmm. um, so when it started up, I was like, is this song misnamed? Because <laughs> I, this does not sound like Alice Cooper. This is not right. what I ex yeah. normally expected. There's no, you know, straight ahead guitar at the beginning. It comes right. in kind mm -hmm. of... Kind of yeah. beboppy, really. Yeah, really. Yeah. Um. So I, um, it was it was definitely it was a good song. It was a very good song. Um, but it, and it, it, this too, he like King Diamond is kind of a roots of later stuff. And and obviously my my taste, I can enjoy stuff on all over the spectrum. But I, I have to say, a lot of the stuff that's you know the early seventies, late sixties rock. Yeah. Zeppelin and Pink Floyd are kind of where I stop. I don't go yeah. a lot for even the Stones. I mean, I like the Stones, sure. but I've never listened to any Stones album start to finish. Never listened to Alice Cooper start to finish, et cetera, et cetera. Mm. You might hear them um, on the radio and not turn them off, but that's about it, yeah, right? Mm. Right, right. <laughs> Except for there's probably a handful I turn off because I'm like, okay. <laughs> fair, fair enough. And, and, a handful, eight albums. and a handful you should turn off, let's be yes. honest here. <laughs> so... Lyrically, I get the impression a lot of Alice Cooper is very much the dis disaffection of youth type stuff. And it may have just been that single album, but like, you know, 18, uh, School's Out, it's very much 
you know, I'm young, I'm angry, and you're going to hear about it type stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, which, as a, a, a high schooler of one era myself, yes, yes. Hit, hit home perfectly. But as, you know, being the, the almost 50-year-old I am today, True. hits very differently. <laughs> it lands lands a bit differently. It's like, these kids should just stop complaining and do the damn homework. Come on. It's not that bad. <laughs> Go mow the lawn. <laughs> exactly. Um, get, get off my lawn. And and this song, which is very much about kind of the metaphor between school and jail, or possibly yeah. school leading to jail. I mean, <laughs> exactly. It's, right. It, it could go lots of ways. I I was never you know like the bad kid in school. I yeah. was mm-hmm. um, I was not the honor roll student either. But I was kind of the quiet. I'm just doing my time, and right. I'm not doing the homework. But I will ace the exam. Right. Leave mm-hmm. me alone. Yep. I just, I'm, I'm I just want to go home and play games. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Um, busy squandering my potential. Let me exactly. Yeah. Well, you know, when you're a smart kid, you never have to do any work. You you right. can just glide by on being a smart kid, and you can get all the way to fifty before you have to do any actual work because you <laughs> just you know you get by on on charm. That's right. I don't mm. know what I'm talking about. I may have some experience in this category. <laughs> Perhaps. Who can say? Who knows? Um, Not for us to say. So. But he he very much turns um, the metaphor of you know being a student and then you know being in jail and and I really like the end where he starts kind of snarling yes. about you know being <laughs> public like animal. One point where he's talking and it just kind of turns into a growl. I think. Yes. Or he just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just and it, it, it's a degradation. It it starts here and it starts down the slope and then it goes hard down the slope. Yeah. 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 So, but it's it's good. Um, where did you find this song? Where did you hear this for the first time? Because this is, predates both of us. Oh, yeah. Well, as you know, I'm a big, I'm a huge Alice Cooper fan. And I, I will talk more. I considered putting the song that made me a huge Alice Cooper fan on the list first. But it's kind of odd and it requires a different vibe. So it'll it'll be on a list later. But, but this is off the School's Out album, which, okay. you know, School's Out, a huge Alice Cooper hit. Right. But the rest of that album is super kind of weird and quirky, which is one of the things I love about Alice Cooper. And I think what I mentioned did not fit into a box. No, I mentioned the other face painters later. And there were many who followed. And, you know, I don't necessarily include Kiss in that, but maybe they are. But after that, you know, there were a lot Manson and a lot of other folks, all those like death metal bands who are face painters. But for me, they all forgot to bring the funny. And right. Alice Cooper never forgot to bring the funny like people. It's it's bizarre to me to think that like the adults of the world at one time thought Alice Cooper was going to be like the downfall of society. I'm like, really? He yeah, he was terrifying. Innocuous to me. I mean, you know, he's yeah, he sings about these things, but he's not, you know, not terribly threatening. And he always struck me as more like this is what happened to vaudeville. Like mm. vaudeville died and it moved to, to guys like Alice Cooper who do these kind of theatrical characters and sing what are really a lot of songs on this album are kind of like show tunes. I mean, if I had, you know, been, uh, if you know, if, yeah, if it, it's like South Pacific or something. And he actually even covers a, a West Side Story song oh. on this album for that reference. But yeah, I liked it because it was, um, it's it's like it's tough it's kind of catchy and it's also funny and so it hit a lot of the kind of notes of things that i like about alice cooper and i was pretty sure it's a song you'd never heard from them that might be accessible and similar to you like i didn't have the kind of like you know my school experience was pretty tame i was not the smartest guy in school but i was a decent student which as you said meant you didn't have to work that hard to like get by but um but i knew kids like this who that didn't work for and who were like just waiting to get out and i think it kind of captures that you know the the mindset of those kids which i could never really relate to very much at the time but looking back now i'm like yeah man i could see how that would kind of be like a prison and he's he's got a real colorful voice when he talks about you know i can't i give all these cigarettes for just a couple lousy beers you know i got license plates running out of my ears because you used to steal license plates off cars back in the day so there's a couple things like that that i think are just kind of real like clever details yep and um yeah and this is the original alice cooper band before he kind of went out on his own and they're like a really tough band 
two like are great players and they all kind of went to high school together they were all like on the track team is how they met and um so, so yeah unlikely. Shows, yeah like gb is glenn buxton who was the guitar player who actually huh. taught like all of them how to play their instruments when they got started because wow. they did like an air guitar thing for like a talent show and like everybody went crazy and they're like hey man maybe we should learn how to play music for real and like do this and that's sort of how the band came about so so anyway i thought it was kind of a nice introduction to my alice cooper obsession which i'll continue to inflict upon you in in the coming months <laughs> fire away i i remember him more i'm sad to say this from like his late 80s early 90 resurgence albums where he was working yeah. with um kind of some of the big producers at the King time Roberts and it was perfectly fine yeah. yes with that yeah. machine gun guitar with the machine gun his. guitar <laughs> yes the big muscles like looked like he'd still like like so he'd been from man of war it looked like yes. he had been in that band where yes. you know if you wore more than just a leather brace like he-man <laughs> you were overdressed Exactly right. You had to have your, yes. your your chest had to be properly oiled before you went on stage. Oh, <laughs> we'll so talk about those genre. too. That's yes. kind of when I got into him because that would have been when I was listening to music. But yeah, this is way back. It's 1972, yep. so I wasn't born when neither of us were born when this album mm-hmm. was released. So an oldie. Now I realized because through my printed notes here that I kind of went a little out of order. So I'm going to go back to what was really number three, but we'll call it number four. I don't remember the sequence I put them in. So you're okay. Which is, um, which is this Dessa tune that you, you gave me. And now I've got, see, this is the problem with, with pieces of paper. (laughs) The analog. You get them all mixed up. And now I'm <laughs> like, I don't know where the Dessa page went somehow. But um, but this was it's quite a five different... at least. So it can't be that. Exactly. Big. I'm like, it can't be that many. Right. Um, so I think and so this is Talking Business by Dessa is the tune. And I think maybe the most recent tune on your list, 2021. Mm-hmm. And very different. Like we, this represents kind of like a shift away from hard swerve. The, the guys we were talking about before, more kind of like a a, a laid back kind of hip hop vibe. Um, and I I think this is true. And I kind of like picked this up from from the YouTube video where I was watching because it has the lyrics mm-hmm. on it. Somebody said, "Well, she wrote this and challenged herself not to use any verbs in it." And I'm like, that's correct. amazing. Yes. I'm like, yes. um, and so it's, you know, I, I kind of love that stuff. It's like stunt writing, um, yep. but it's like, it's also like writing. Ex- I, that shows to me that like, this is somebody who cares about writing and who wants to kind of get outside of their own box. When you do these kind of writing exercises where you limit what you allow yourself to do. And I really think like it separates like the pedestrians from the pros in terms of how people can do this. And it's phenomenal, <laughs> like really, really impressive how she manages to deliver what's a pretty uh, robust and complex complex story in like a few acts, Mm -hmm. I think without really any verbs, like with these kind of like uh, shotgun nouns, uh, you know, one after another and really evocative. Um, I mean, the musically it's pretty simple. I think, you know, compared Mm -hmm. with like kind of what you would expect from sort of like a laid back kind of hip hop tune. Um, And like a, a spoken word performance, but she's got a great voice and apparently part of a hip hop collective too, which we can mm-hmm. talk about, but, um, and does some crazy ass phrasing work, which I love like people who could do crazy phrasing who like say, this is what I want to say, but I only have like this much room to say it, like a tiny amount of room. We're going to spit it. If you're watching yeah. the video here. If you're listening on the audio, I'm sorry for all the hand gestures, but, um, <laughs> but yeah, just really good. And I love that stuff. Like since, you know, Bob Dylan, like uh, his crazy phrasing. I'm, I'm have been accused of having like wonky phrasing whenever I write things, but I love it. And like, even at her most like wacky phrasing, I mean, it hardly makes me blink. Like she's so good at it. I'm like, man, you had to work hard to get all those words in there, but you did it. <laughs> like it, it worked. And, and it tells a clever story. Um, I think, you know, about like a, a rich guy who gets murdered in a hotel and you find out that like it's the nanny, but you sort of get in a nanny cam and the whole the title harkens back to the very end where it's like you don't talk business in the baby's room because that's where the nanny cam is. And like you get it and the, the cam's been like pulled out uh, at the end of the story. So, yeah, just like really evocative and um and cleverly done so 
I went ahead and like Dessa is on my list of people I now follow on Bandcamp because she's an <laughs> artist who's on Bandcamp. Yep. Um, but yeah, man, I just really liked this. And it struck me, I'll, I'll be honest, compared to everything else on your list, it struck me as kind of the outlier and stylistically. And I'm like, it's cool that Robert likes this. I wouldn't have necessarily pegged you as a Dessa fan. <laughs> Knowing what so, I know about your your other musical tastes, totally fair. It's it's weird how I do have some kind of crazy outlier loves, and she's sure. one of them. She's actually of everybody on the list, and I don't remember number five, so I may correct myself later. Nah, eh, probably won't. Probably. Um, I've seen her live five times. I have wow. been to her shows five times, and two of them I've met her. Oh, nice! Uh, in fact, this last time I had. Um, there's like a VIP pass was an extra 10 bucks. I'm like, why not? Yeah, why not? Um, so I met her in the kind of the, the she did like a meet and greet thing. And yeah. I said, this is my fifth time seeing you live. I saw you at a book signing one time because she also does write books. Yeah. Um, I'd like the secret handshake. And she said, absolutely. And, she, and I don't remember it for the life of me. <laughs> right. But, but she it. had one ready. Yeah. She had one ready. She taught me the secret handshake. I am now an initiate in the, uh, the, 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 the secret Dessa handshake course. club of Dessa. Um, just super nice human being, um, nice. very much an independent artist. Uh, she's from Minneapolis and okay. also now New York, but not very successful. Um, and I don't mean that in a bad way. Just, that yeah, she, just hard to break her through. Her star has not risen to the level I think it should be. Gotcha. Uh, which makes her accessible, as, as I've met yes, her. Right. Now um, you can pay 10 bucks it, to get the VIP pass and exactly. not 1000 Yeah. <laughs> Indeed. So um, she was a beat poet. She was a uh, slam, slam poet, not yeah, a beat poet. Yeah. That's, that's from the 40s. Yeah, that's from the 50s, 40s or 50s, Hepcats and guys with berets and coffee shops. But we got it. A little different. A little different. Um, but she was doing slam poetry when she was in college. And okay. um, this hip-hop collective, which is called Doom Tree, it's yeah. a strange name, but they're, they're also excellent, um, approached her and, and said, I think you'd be great in the band. And she's like, what are you talking about? And, yeah. and they kind of brought her in. And taught her to take her poetry to music. And she is now on like album seven or eight independently, as well as yeah. I think three or four with them. Um, she's fantastic. She's an excellent writer. She has a couple of books of poetry, one book that's her kind of autobiography, um, nice. which, and she does NPR. It's like she's one of the very few rappers that hosts NPR shows. That's nice. not, there's, there's a very small Venn diagram <laughs> it's a, it's a, there. I, it's it right. might be just her. Her lap is not huge. Yeah. <laughs> Um, she's hosted both the one a, which is a show out of DC. Oh yeah. Not far oh, from the me. one. A, yeah. And, uh, science Friday. She was very excited to be a guest nice. host on science Friday, uh, which is fascinating. Nice. And she did a podcast on the BBC, um, called simply human or something about kind of the human experience, which, you know, there's lots of podcasts about the human experience. Right. I mean, our podcast that is largely yes. about the human experience, but we, well, we but we'll allow it through the lens of music. <laughs> exactly. For now. For now. Who knows? This is, this is a moving target, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. So this is, this is different for me. A hundred percent. I, um, I, how I got into her, this is a very strange story. Um, the, one of the other rappers in doom tree is he goes by the moniker of POS. Okay. His name is Stefan or, or Stefan, or I don't actually remember now. <laughs> um, and I, it, POS could mean lots of things. It was like Jesus sure of could. Stefan right. or, you know, mm, other possible yeah. interpretations. Right. And other I think pieces. he's kind of enjoyed that. It could be lots of things. That's he right. doesn't correct mm. people when they guess. Um, <laughs> I picked up their album after he had a video on MTV two dating myself. <laughs> Ooh. Covering Pearl Jam's "Why Go," just okay. him on a keyboard. Yeah, and it was kind of this hip hop inflected because he could he could sing really well. He sang you know beautifully, but kind of spit in a more rapper fashion. Pearl Jam, and I thought this is awesome. Yeah, and AV Club, the the yeah, offshoot the onion, of the AV Onion, yeah. reviewed it and said, you know, this is a great album. Doom Tree, No Kings. I picked it up. Dessa is outstanding on this album. Start picking up Dessa albums, there and you, you know the dominoes fall. In. Nice, exactly. Yeah, no, she's a, and you can tell, like, I'm kind of a writing snob given, yes. you know, and I know you probably are too, given our, our predilection for reading and stories and, and stuff. And it's clear to me, like, she is a real talent 
in yeah. like like a writer. Like if you ask me to say like describe her in a word after hearing that, I'm like, that's a writer. I mean, she's yeah. great at rapping. She's got clearly a great melodic sense to build this. But I'm like, it's really clear to me that what's it that the words are super important to her, and I like that because they're super important to me too. And um, and also I would just add like out of all the things on your list, I think it's the one thing I could hear myself kind of like casually listening to. Um, you know, having on in the background, I could see myself enjoying just kind of mm -hmm. living in the space that this music creates where the other stuff on the list. And we could talk about this or maybe how you listen to music or how I listen to music, I think requires like more focus or like I'm going to sit and listen to this music and maybe do something that doesn't take my whole brain, but really kind right. of focus on the music. Because the music will pull you out of it. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. The music will, will pull me out of it. And hers is, is kind of a perfect sort of blend. It's like I can really get into the world words because they really matter if I pay a lot of attention and it's also really melodic and kind of fun and easy to go along with so I could also just kind of swim you know through my day with it uh, around me and I'm still picking it up and still you know getting some of those words but um but yeah it's a, a real nice musical space to be in too that's very interesting it, yeah it's um it's not background but at the same time it is not um it doesn't take you on the same journey of, of whatever else. Yeah, you're right. And yeah. it, it's, I don't think it would be insulting to her to say that it, it is something you can dip in and out of. Yeah, without, I, I, yeah. I agree. It's not background. And I don't mean to imply yeah. that, yeah, that you can, you know, that you shouldn't pay attention to it or it's, it, you know, it requires less attention, but it does um, just musically for me, it seems like I could enjoy this, like and turn some of the story part of my brain off and enjoy it musically two and i feel like the other ones like i kind of got to meld them like i got to be interested in the music and the stick it got to be i got to pay a lot of attention to it because it demands a lot of attention right. and i think that's a really cool thing for an artist to be able to do too it's like hey here's this really well crafted thing and like if you if you give it the attention you'll get more out of it but you can also kind of skate along with it and kind of pick it up through osmosis or as you sort of go and yeah i just thought it was uh really got cool those layers then that's right. It's got layers, man. Working, working in layers. <laughs> Stratification. <laughs> exactly. Other big words. Indeed. <laughs> we got some other big words coming up, ladies that's and gentlemen. Right. Stay tuned. That's right. All right. So your song number five, and and I see you went out on the big notes. <laughs> I, I did. I did. <laughs> it's this is trouble by Elvis. Elvis so, Presley. The King. The Do king. you really need to say Elvis Presley? I, mean, I don't know. I felt, I felt other compelled Elvises. to in that moment, but no, not really. Elvis Costello, it's not. Yeah. It's not, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no. Elvis. It's Elvis. Elvis. It's Elvis. But, you know, I, we grew up in this weird time where Elvis was kind of a little bit of a joke. Yeah. Like, he Absolutely. was... He, he was he was alive for, for part of our life, but not really in the spotlight as he was. And... I guess the way he died and his kind of his later years, um, yeah. he'd become kind of not the cool right. cat Punch he line. was younger. Yeah. A little yeah. bit, yeah. yeah. And I remember that. And I specifically remember my grandparents had a neighbor who literally had a Velvet Elvis. <laughs> it's amazing. It's something. <laughs> like there was this crazy cult of of Elvish worshippers yeah. yeah. for for let's say women of a certain age. Sure. Let's That's let's be fair. Fine. Let's say that. Um, so I, I I never disliked Elvis, but I can't say I was either driven to being an Elvis fan either. Sure. Um, I was aware of probably half of his big hits. Yeah. I mean, it was hard not to because right. even yeah. even after his death, like Hound Dog and right. um, exactly. Viva Love Las Vegas. Vegas. And Viva Las Vegas. Yeah. yeah, there's some that are just kind of iconic and seep into the culture. Um, but I never understood the phenomenon of of the King. Yeah. I, I, I it didn't grasp grasp me because I didn't live through it, and I didn't. And again, he'd become kind of a joke. Um, exactly. At least at that time. Um, I know that like people lost their minds over him and I know that like right. the Beatles were the same level, but I exactly. had a more of understanding of the Beatles. Although I got to be honest as a kid, I like the monkeys better. Yeah, I do too. Which is like now <laughs> we talk, yeah, we talk about shameful to talk about. Oh, I, I still but, like you know, monkeys. there's no accounting for things. Yeah, I know. Mm. All right. So this song, I didn't think this was Elvis. You know, I, I, I okay. It's Elvis's voice, but the yeah. music felt kind of very throwback, kind of more of like a forties. Yeah. Than the 60s. Um, 
And that's weird because when you're coming back to music that you don't really know, but it's still not the right, it, it doesn't feel like the right era. But right. I know that like homage of earlier eras of music is like probably the oldest thing in music of all. Like sure. <laughs> the Romans are aping the Greeks from hundreds exactly. of years before them. So it's not like that's a weird thing, but it's still sometimes weird in my head. Like sometimes I listen to the Billy Joel stuff from the 80s and he's aping the 50s and the, the like the doo-wop eras too. Yep. And it's sort of like, it's incongruent somehow. Yeah. Um, Interesting. Cognitive anyway, dissonance going on. A yeah. little bit. This is a really good song. This is, and it's in the, the evil part. I was like, yeah. you know, I know he especially, he was in trouble for his like, Levicious ways that he swung his hips and stuff right. like that, Ooh, and I don't know so. where this fell in the <laughs> sequence of all that. But like, I thought it was an interesting move for him to say, y- "Y'all think I'm a bad guy? I'm a bad guy, all right." And, yeah. and this is a really short song, but it's also kind of a declarative. Yep. <laughs> okay. Yep. Everything Game they on. say about me is right. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, so. I- yeah. Go ahead, please. No, I was going to say, is that I didn't want to interrupt you. you that's it. That's my additional thoughts. That's my concept of the song. It it surprised me because it didn't seem, it didn't meld with the Elvis that, as I knew the songs. Yeah. Um, but it's certainly a good song, and it's certainly, <laughs> I think it's a a fine piece of music in his repertoire that I'm sad that I actually had never heard before. Yeah, and I I picked it thinking, you know, I was thinking kind of that. I'm like, this is an Elvis song that I bet Robert never heard and that I think will probably strike him differently yeah. than a lot of the Elvis that kind of seep through. And exactly as you said, like, I grew, you know, we grew up around the same time and throughout the 80s, you know, Elvis was a punchline. You know, he was a, a joke largely. And, you know, for the culture because of the way he died, because fat Elvis, you know, and, and all these things that um, were... But it's easy, I think, to kind of because of that to sort of lose track of the fact that he was like a force of nature in the 50s and the early 60s. My dad was a big Elvis fan, but I mean, he was sort of of the era. And, you know, we used to go into uh, I remember distinctly going into like a a pizza place as a as like a teenager and some woman with my father and some woman going, that man looks like Elvis. And he did. I mean, my dad affected like the Elvis hair, like, you know, as long as he could. The the kind of, you know, slick (laughs) pompadour thing. Um, But yeah, so I, I wanted to find an Elvis song. And this is, I think, from one of his early movies, King Creole, like late 50s. But it is oh. him at like kind of the height of his power. Um, and and like you said, sort of leaning into this kind of, you know, like bad boy persona and in this kind of burlesque sort of music yeah. with like lots of horns and splashy drums. And I can see like a big band doing this. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And um and it also like I I was really close to putting some like Glenn Danzig on the list because he'll be on the list later. <laughs> yes. And I gotta say, man, like there's no way like without this song, I don't think Glenn Danzig would have ever gotten out of New Jersey. I think he would have been like this. This is sort of like the prototype for that, yeah. that I think he will follow later, even like down to the attitude of it. But yeah, it's it's just one of my favorite Elvis tunes and kind of an unexpected like tough. Elvis tune mm-hmm. that you don't think, you know, from these like love ballads and hound dog and stuff and him being kind of a joke later. I think yeah. this kind of captures the moment where I'm like, you could see like if this, like if you heard that in the late fifties, you'd be like, Elvis is badass. <laughs> like, yeah. That's that's something I've never He's heard. He's the man. Really yeah. Different. Yeah. 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 So, uh, so I promise not to subject you to much Elvis, but, but no, yeah, no. there's, there are, there are some gems there and yeah, I think we, uh, you know, it's easy to kind of uh, hear what the the pop culture will put out or put in movies and commercials and stuff. But there are a lot of tunes that um, that still mean a lot to me that I think are still impactful and, and strike me kind of differently than a lot of the other Elvis stuff. And this one I've been thinking about a lot. Um, it's funny because the 80s had this kind of view of his type of performer, kind of not the loungy, but sort of like, the big front man thing as this real cheesy thing, especially, you know, he was into the costumes. He was into performance. Yeah. And the eighties kind of said, throw all that away. I mean, that's when Elton John got out of his, his outfits and his costumes. Right. And and I don't know if the eighties was stripped down so much, but it was, it was more about like 
this image of authenticity, which was probably right. still bullshit. Yeah. It was still not, right. you know, authenticity is very hard to really get to the bottom of. Yeah, but, it's you true. Know, the iconic blue jeans of Bruce Springsteen is what is, is hit right. me in the head right now. Yeah. And later on, even though the hair bands, hair metal bands, excuse me, were crazy with the um, heavy makeup and the hair and everything else, they were still authentic ish enough. You know, they were still like yeah. down and dirty. Somehow. And it was not the glitz. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I don't yeah. know why in hindsight, but yeah, I think that's exactly right. And I remember, was there a, was it the bare naked ladies who did the new kids on the block song? There's something about like, there's a, there's a, a bare naked lady song. I think about the new kids on the block and it sort of like ta- points out the fact that like, you know, you, you, you belittle this act because they're singers and they mm-hmm. don't write their stuff, but it's like, look at Elvis. You crowned him King. Like he did the same thing. Yeah, and I yeah. think, you know, there is, and, and not that I'm a new kids on the block, Block fan either, but I, I do think there's there's a lot to that. Like this sort of fake authenticity. The 80s really looked down on people who were singers. Or like right. I remember there being, even as you know, as a kid in the 80s, I felt very differently about people if I knew they were just singing somebody else's music. It's like it didn't count. And I don't yeah, yeah. feel that way anymore. Like, in fact, you know, I, I, it doesn't make sense to me why I ever felt like that, but it does seem like that the it 80s felt like really kind of pushed that. Yeah. It did. And I'm like, you know, there's some there's there's as much that goes into like interpreting or delivering a tune like that like this trouble you know and and i don't know who the hell wrote it but i guarantee it probably wasn't elvis and but yeah i I, you know i don't care (laughs) mostly now i don't care back then i really cared and the culture kind of told me to care and kind of split people up as like well you can't you know you can't like these people because they're frauds or sellouts Mm -hmm. or they don't have real talent because they just do this one thing really well so this is this is a tangent, but it'll come back into a good place, I swear. Sure. <laughs> Did you remember being taught about the Greek plays and how they really didn't write new Greek plays, but they kept staging new versions of the same old stories? Yeah, like recycling the same, yeah. like all the, the same idea. The same, yeah. But this is my new interpretation of that same idea. And right. like the American Songbook, the jazz standards was nothing but that, and it was all these different people doing the same song over again. And finding new ways to make it their own. Right. And that was incredibly popular. I mean, that was was a whole genre of music. Yeah. And yet we have this broken perception, had, had. Yeah. That, yeah, if you're just singing and you're just a performer, and that's the thing, performer was a bad word. It was, yes. Yeah. Um, So interesting. Yeah, you're right. And I think, uh, yeah, and maybe, you know, the idea that anything, you know, everything's based on what came before. And you right. know, the other yeah, is like, of course, you can't help but rewrite something. And like, even if you wrote it all yourself, like you still are standing on the shoulders of so many people before you who did this. There's no way you would be where you are with without them you know it's like right. the crazy, it's like those people are like well i don't have to pay taxes because my 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 company doesn't use any of that i'm like dude you used the road you you benefit in all sorts of ways from this stuff and you just don't see it like you know and, right and i feel like that there was really a, a lot of that and now i look back and i go well, that was kind of silly i but but i totally bought into it at the time yeah. um, they told because, you to and you didn't know better yet Right, right. And yeah. I guess with, with time, we're now older and wisdom. wiser. See? Yes. That's right. The price is no of, longer a dump stat. This wisdom. <laughs> exactly. Wisdom is Charisma, right. It's not just for clerics stat. anymore. Yeah, that's right. Comeliness, <laughs> definitely a dump stat if you're using that. <laughs> Take that off. Oh, uh, some people are going to get that reference and, and laugh. And some people exactly. are like, what is wrong with these two men? I don't know. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and welcome. Welcome to the show, ladies yes. and gentlemen. We're so, sorry. <laughs> exactly. We apologize. We'll keep apologizing, but we're not going to stop. <laughs> no, um, we won't do that. <laughs> we won't stop. So uh, my uh, number five on your list is Honor by VNV Nation. Ooh. And See, this I, was yeah. we did this weeks ago, and I've long forgotten. I know, but yeah. I'm so glad that I yeah. this I've inflicted this on you because I love 1998. This I think this yes. was this your earliest on, on your list, certainly. Yeah, way back in the way back machine, and this one was was different. I, I liken it more to the like nothing's going to be quite like the Desert Tune you sent me, which sort of stands out different from the rest of them. But this had kind of like a uh, like an electronic dance music, mm-hmm. like a house music kind of feel to it that the like a no real analog pounding, instruments used yeah, at all real pounding yeah. bass and you know um and it's a oh what did i say here 
I say it's this is <laughs> you always I always know that I'm about to say something dumb when I say this is a totally unfair comparison, but I'm gonna make it anyway. <laughs> Here we I, go. Well, All if right. it was an unfair comparison, Damon, why would you just not make it? Well, and yeah, I promise that one of the things I hate is when I tell somebody, Oh, you know, I share this thing with you and you like it, and you'd be like, you know, this reminds me of this. I'm like, well, don't man, that seems like a, a cheap reaction. <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna have a cheap reaction. Um how dare you, it, sir, it, in advance. <laughs> <laughs> right it uh it it sort of reminded me a little bit of um some of the pink floyd stuff from like the 80s like that had like a real like pounding and kind of huh. like a vocal delivery that was um affected and kind of like um really echoey or i, I don't know like, like uh, uh, i'm thinking uh, of you know like of a uh, new machine or something yeah or yeah um, you know there's that there's that part in the wall when they got home at night they're fat so yeah they're fat. you know yeah, that yeah. kind of like looming but there's like a real like pounding beat behind it um and anyway that's not uh, there's no other connection here to to pink floyd but um but it definitely had like it. It struck me as war music. This is this is like music. I'm like Robert probably loves this because he's playing war games to it. And I'm like, and I would love to play like role playing games to it because it's just like really kind of it's anthemic. Driving, it, yes. Yeah, it is. It's really driving. It's relentless in that sense. And in, in a way that you know the other ones aren't that have like a lot of passages. We talked about kind of the movements, and this one like really kind of settles in to this, and it's got some variation in it too um but but yeah it's it's got real kind of like a mechanistic militaristic sort of vibe to it which i i assume is what he's going for given the the lyrics um are kind of like a war is hell kind of thing and and the music sort of reflects that so so i really liked that um again this doesn't seem like a like kind of a difficult passive listening experience to me it's right. like i could see listening to this when i'm like you know playing games or doing something i could see like having it on to like promote a vibe but i'm like i'm probably not going to like put this on in the living room when i want like, to sit down and Ready listen to take a nap but, no yeah, I'll listen to music um but but yeah you know at the same time i'm like you know uh, in in some ways given how technically proficient like the the guys that we talked about at the beginning on your list were like this seems like less musical to me which is probably an unfair way to say it but at the same time it had me tapping my foot like no i mean i was into it like you feel it in like a real deep kind of uh, core way and i'm like and in some ways that actually mirrors sort of i think the war like lyrics more than the delivery of the 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 other guys at the beginning would have you know like a simpler like pounding delivery works better for this so it definitely struck me as different and kind of standing out kind of like that's like different than anything else on the list um, in that it's definitely more like this kind of EDM, more like uh, beholden to how it reminds me of like house music almost with like that mm -hmm. driving relentless bass. Um, but yeah, I, I don't dislike it, but I think ooh, I'd have to listen to this under the right circumstances. This would be right. a lot of fun to listen to. So this is VNV Nation. They're victory, not vengeance. They're a pair of Irish guys who moved to Germany because oh, wow. I guess there's more electronic music <laughs> industry in Germany. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Kraftwerk <laughs> yeah. has a whole a whole village of, of EDM performers. <laughs> right. Um, I got turned on to this by a friend. So you, of course, made mixtapes and mix CDs probably Absolutely. long after yeah. the rest of the world gave up on that sort of thing, like I did. <laughs> exactly. Um, and, and we traded, my friends and I would trade stuff. And this was a friend of mine who was much more influenced by like the cure and the goth kind of okay. stuff yeah um so we were very different musical tastes but i wanted to see what he had to offer and he wanted to see what i had to offer and i don't think most of it i enjoyed because he also is very much a theater kid and like he had a version of carry on my wayward son by the oak ridge boys Ooh, <laughs> look that up it's very strange <laughs> yeah, um I mean, it's 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 in a good way, but it's very it's 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 it feels weird because the Oak Ridge Boys <laughs> are have such a you know distinct yes. vocal delivery, and Kansas was not the same. But anyway, <laughs> um, this one stood out as as um, it's very you're right militaristic. It's a it's a last stand sort of song. The, yeah. the main line mm -hmm. is "Stand your ground. This is what we're fighting for." Right. Um, mm -hmm. And it it is 
it's dark, but at the same time, it, it, it has like the elements of hope to it, at yeah. least a little bit. Um, but it is it is a driving beat of a electronic, doom, 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 like you said. Yeah. Um, and yeah, you couldn't listen to this passively. It is you either into it or it's not right. It's the wrong time yeah. for this. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's so, even when talking about it, like I had to thump my yeah. foot. <laughs> I wanted to like stomp <laughs> my feet. Even when just talking about it, like the the yeah. memory of it has like seeped into, and it's like a march too with that yes. kind of regular, you know, which also uh, resonates nicely with the military theme in it. Yep. So yeah. Boy. Um, so, and it too is not is not my usual. Um, yeah, I like them a lot. They have done oh six or seven albums too. That seems like a magic number in okay. my head. Yeah, um, of all kinds of stuff, but all electronic. They don't do analog. They might do analog drums occasionally, just to be weird. But most yeah. of it is synthetic everything, and that's just right. the, the lane that they're in. But not all of it driving. Some of it is very melodic okay. and beautiful. Some of it yeah. is darker and and you know, danceable. And I'm, and I'm not a dancer. No, so neither, I've never seen them. And I don't know that I would be welcome in a club where they're playing. Cause I'd be like, I'm just going to go stand over there by the wall with a, with a bottle of water. Are y'all right. cool with that? No, we're not. No, like, no you out. need to dance. I'm like, well, yeah, so I, you need to hop up and down go. like a, like God intended. <laughs> exactly. Well, that's interesting. See, I, I, I'm curious to, to hear maybe some of their other music too. Um, to 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 see the difference, and mm-hmm. and I'm curious, like, is this war gaming music for you? Do you like listen to this when gaming, or when like when would you say I want to hear VNV Nation Honor, or I mean, any, you know, any, any of the VNV Nation? Interesting enough, I think mostly it's a driving song. It's a, okay. if I'm on the road yeah. alone, it's to get the blood up and, yeah. and right. kind of you know you make sure you. I'm at peak awakeness <laughs> and and functionality I'm not gonna nod off at the wheel with this song, no that's for no. sure yeah um and and I, I probably drive too fast when this is on sorry <laughs> officer right um because it, it it you just ugh, yeah yeah it, it, yeah. No, it has a real energy like a drive to it um that uh, and and part of that i think just that simplicity and kind of relentlessness of that beat that is just yeah. you know it's hard not to feel driven by that my friends don't love this um really? they're mostly they they their tastes are not as exotic as mine to be okay. to be nice um and so the electronica stuff that i enjoy and there's not a lot of bands electronica they have to be a very particular bent um, yeah. for me to be really into it like i don't house music dub and bass, all that kind of stuff. Not my thing. Generally, There's nothing wrong with it, but it's, yeah, you know, sure. for somebody it's just else. Not, just not your thing. Um, but I do put this on occasionally when we're gaming and people kind of like, well, what else we got today? What, what else <laughs> do we... What's, what's next, Robert? What, what else do? Yeah. Yeah. So. No, I, yeah, I, I can see that. I mean, I think it is... Um, yeah, I, acquired taste. And, and acquire or definitely a d- different than, yeah, yeah. than, than what uh, you're... Yeah, I, I'm sure my friends would, would, would ask the same thing if I put it on, too. They'd be like, um... What's your next pick, Damon? What's yeah. That? Yeah. What else we got in Ghost yeah, else, Steve DJ else? time? <laughs> exactly. I'm like, well, I guess you could put on some Elvis or some King yeah. Diamond. I don't know. Those are apparently the 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 stretches. So yes. yeah. Well, we have have I think we've talked about all of them. Have we done that? Yes. We talked about ten yeah. songs. Look at that. Five per person, ten in total. Nice. We've done it. We've done it. We 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 set out to do it. You said, should we do this? And I said, let's do it. And look at that. We've gone ahead and we've done it. Well, I got to say, I'm, I'm really happy with the way that discussion went. And there was a lot of fun stuff on your list again, that I never would have known about. And that I am now happy to know about. So, uh, yeah, the only uh, ingredient we're uncertain of is if anybody else cares to listen to us talk about it. so we'll we'll produce this as a podcast and find yes. that out but frankly i'm perfectly fine to keep talking about the songs whether anybody's listening or not downloads really. zero yeah exactly I'm eh, like, yeah, you know, i'll download it a couple times just so i have it in, in case of emergency yeah exactly we'll have two or we'll three be like hey look somebody downloaded it a couple times <laughs> someone who lives in my house Weird, <laughs> so huh? in my general <laughs> geographical area <laughs> my height weight and build but uh, <laughs> it's okay Good taste. Yeah. They have fine they, taste. That's right. That's yeah. somebody with good taste in podcasts. So, uh, so yeah. So five more next month. You I think? think we'll do. Yeah, we'll do five. More. I think it's, I, it seems like a good number. It did. It was. It was a good number. I listened to them like right when you sent them. I listened to them and kind of you know thought about them and then I let them sit for a little while and then kind of pounded them again 
a yeah. couple times yeah. back, back. And then yesterday I sat down or Friday, I think a couple of days before we're podcasting here, I sat down and really made myself write out all the notes. I'd had some kind of, you know, haphazardly here and there, but no, it was a five seems good. Yeah. And, and we can continue to compare our links here. We'll see how, uh, how, how much variation we have. That was fun too. And I yeah. think uh, interesting to see, um, kind of how the, the the progressive metal tends towards the longer kind of passage driven. Mm-hmm. And I think that's part of the reason that, that your list is just longer than mine, because those songs tend to <laughs> they need, do. they need, they need a little more room to unspool than a regular right. song. that's just like verse, chorus, verse, chorus, out. Um, Gotta breathe. Yes. That's right. Give them some room to breathe. I'll be curious to see if I can, I'm not going to go out of my way to do it, but for five more acts that you'd not heard of before. Ooh, yeah. um, I will try, and I can't promise this because I'm so in love with Dessa, not to duplicate artists, at least for a little okay. while. Maybe we'll give it a few months and we'll see what happens. Okay. Um, because Dessa has some amazing songs that I just want to share. Nice. Um, yeah. And I yeah. think you'll also get kind of the breath of my other weird genres that I can appreciate and enjoy that yeah. maybe my friends can't stand. <laughs> Or, <laughs> that's or a, that's in right. very small doses. <laughs> no, I'm I'm very much looking forward to that. I apologize in advance. There will probably be an Alice Cooper song on every list for that's the okay. next six months, but but they'll all be different and weird. And he did a lot of stuff in the early '80s that he was so messed up he doesn't even remember doing. And that's some of my favorite. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we'll have that's some. I'll, I'll try to keep it varied for you. But yeah, no, I'm I'm looking forward to preparing another list. This was a lot of fun to prepare Excellent. the list for you. It was a lot of fun to listen to the list that you prepared and to have this discussion. So, this so awesome. yeah, I really yeah. enjoyed it. And, and what's sad is that you and I have have talked for many years. But we do go some months without communication, that's and true. that's life is difficult. It is. <laughs> we, we both accept this. We know yes. I mean, we both, yes, we're like, we should stop apologizing for not reaching out more frequently because we both do it and we just know yeah. why. It's just life getting uh, getting lifey on us and, yes, indeed. and keeping us busy. But yeah, so this is nice, a nice excuse for us to to talk on a schedule and and keep that going so yeah and just i'm like i don't know the last time you and i have talked for an hour and a half like eh, you know probably again at a convention a decade or two ago who knows but so no this has been i can remember us having conversations in hotel rooms because we stayed together a couple of times yeah for gen con or origins or something like that somewhere yeah i agree it's it's been a while so So yeah this was a real pleasure a lot of fun and um we will um we'll, we'll do it again next yep. month sounds good all right all sir. right all thank right. you very much and uh i hope if nothing else we come up with uh, many many titles to confuse people <laughs> as to this show that's right <laughs> what we have going on herein indeed right one title is for amateurs we're going to use as many titles <laughs> people who can make up their mind or, or something <laughs> exactly yeah. it's not, it doesn't sound like us no all right well no. uh thank you robert for the discussion and take care everybody and we'll be back at you in uh, hopefully a, a month after you hear this one, whenever that is. That sounds good. Mm-hmm. Thanks, Damon. All right. All right. Thanks, Rob. Bandersnatch Production.